we st tried to gather today some uh, some nice exotic and classic cars, all right, to um, to uh, to get them for a ride in the desert. This is the first of the seasons, as you as you know, the weather here in UAE is too hot to to drive during um, during during summertime. So this is our first event, and then uh, we have uh, we will have uh, on a sequence of one event per month minimum whether it would be uh, drives, uh, rallies, uh, car show, concours uh, d'élégance. I, I love British cars. I think, you know, a British has been excellent with Italians uh, to, 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 to drive, to, to make up those beautiful uh, classic cars, you know, and uh, there's a huge story behind it. I'm on my way to, to take ownership of uh, E-Type. I'm, uh, I'm searching for it. As soon as I would find the right uh, E-Type, I'll go for it. I love Jaguars. You know, it's the right combination of a lot of good things uh, when you drive, you know, comfort, luxury, design, beauty, those long bonnets, V12s. What else do you want? You tell me. <laughs> I've owned it for about five years. Uh, it resides in a few different countries in the world. It's been more places than I have. Um, I bought it with about 1,100 kilometers on it, so it didn't get used much. Uh, I've put about 5,000 on since I bought it. It's fantastic, very reliable. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, driving it today, and I've enjoyed going home in it too, actually. But I did manage to find another one while scrounging for parts that sort of lived in the desert for a few years, and uh, I managed to disassemble that over the last three years and uh, put it back together again, or more or less, it's almost done. So hopefully one day soon I'll bring a red one to one of these events. So I always wanted one since I was a kid, and um, I found it by accident, more likely it found me. And I just I couldn't resist. Um, the, the owner was attached to it, but he wanted to go to a good home. And I think when he met me, he realized I was that home. So, Ono, oh this is your Alpha Zagato SZ. Tell us about this. It's a really odd-looking car. Tell us a bit more about this. Um, it's actually sort of almost like a concept car that was built by Alpha in the early 90s. Alpha was really suffering badly at that time because they were... Um, uh, basically they had to raise their profile and so they came up with this car it was more or less like a design competition in-house only 1036 were built and it's completely fiberglass over a steel a steel chassis and steel frame I saw one when it first came out briefly in the showroom it disappeared and then this one I found in Dubai about uh, well it was last year in November I found it it was actually in very bad shape um, the previous owner um, had it parked in front of his house in the sun covered in dust uh, it had scratches everywhere all the lights were broken it was it was really run down but I could see that underneath there was a really good car because it's only done well at that time it had done 5200 kilometers so when I started cleaning it up it, it was pretty clear it's it's almost a new car when I first came to Dubai I um, I missed my classic cars overseas all Italians obviously Lancias and um, I bought myself a Boxster, and although a fantastic car to drive, I absolutely loved it. It just doesn't have a soul, and after a few more months, I started missing my cars again, and then I bought my, my first Lancia, the, the Lancia Delta Integrale, and um, when I compared, that put a, a much bigger smile on my face than when I would be driving the Boxster. Not because the Boxster wasn't fun to drive, but it's, it's just a modern car, and it's a bit bland in in the Lancia and in the Alfa I don't know it's it's different it has a soul and hence the Italian um, car cars I guess I don't know it, there's something different about them yeah um, that's a KTM crossbow uh, it's a Dallara edition model 90 uh, well 2008 we bought it two years ago so the Dallara edition is basically one of the first 100 pieces produced there is a special chassis and it's a kind of a full option uh, edition of this car, so it's a two-liter turbo, four-cylinder. So it's a small engine, but basically the car is very light. It's uh, 780 kilo, kilo full uh, full weight. Um, you, the car is 240 horsepower original. We uh, we pumped it up to uh, 360 horsepower. <laughs> so it's very fast uh, stock, uh, but now it's it's basically like a plane, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's very fun. It's a very fun, uh, very fun track car, but which is road legal. Mm. It's basically like driving like a big karting, yeah. So uh, you just need to uh, weight lightly your foot when you accelerate. Just keep in mind that you don't have any ABS or any traction control or any anything. So it's basically a pure racing car. So you just feel everything, but you just need to be aware that there is nothing. So don't break at the last second yeah because if you lock that's locking there is nothing to uh, get it back but it's, it's really uh, enjoyable it's a very fun car to drive 
We're here with Amr Said Rashid in his beautiful 1924 Ford Model T. Tell us about this car, Amr. Uh, actually, this car is, uh, took almost six months to restore every single part. Uh, Model T is the most famous car in the world. Uh, in the States, they call it the car who puts America on wheels. Uh, the mass production for this car since 1908 till 1927, 15.5 million car. Uh, I like this car, I like everything, uh, it gives us the feeling we go back to the beautiful uh, era or uh, beautiful last 20s and centuries, uh, 20 and 20s and 30s years in this uh, century. Uh, I always enjoy with this car, uh, every, every time I go out with this car, people they start to stopping me, they start to ask questions, they are very happy when they saw this car. I have four cars now, two is finished, restore, and two is not, uh, I, I not start yet with these two cars. Actually for me it's semi-precious more than any other car because starting from 40s all the cars similar. From outside is nice shape but same engine, same transmission. But in 20s and 30s it's very unique, every single part, all the accessories is very unique, you will not find. The Range Rover hasn't changed its shape since 1970 and this is a 1988 model I found here uh, for sale. Uh, but I call it a new Range Rover because what's extraordinary about it, it's brand new. Although the car is from 1988, it has 6,000 kilometers on the clock, completely original, the paint work, the, the body work, every body panels are fully original. Um, and I've been having fun as a Land Rover collector and an expert on the, on the brand. I've been having fun finding the bits and pieces, you know, old tags from the factory that were still there in place. And it's really a time capsule. You know, a lot of these cars were brought here over time and kept in garages and not necessarily fully used and kept in very good condition. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to find these and to keep them in that condition. And it's a, it's, it's a fantastic community. It's very virgin. It's very new. Uh, it, is, it is not as sophisticated or evoluted as we find we might find in other regions of the world, Europe, uh, some of it in Asia, but mostly America. Uh, but it's extremely genuine, uh, very, very passionate. A lot of the locals are extremely passionate about their cars, extremely knowledgeable, but so humble that it's hard to know it. I'd love to see it grow with a proper genuine uh, spirit, not a speculative spirit. Uh, the love for cars, no matter the year, no matter the era, no matter the, the value of it, needs to be done because it's a love for automobiles. And, and with that in mind, I really would see this place as a flourishing market for genuine automobiles and some of the best cars in the world as well. Speculation on automobiles is a mistake. Uh, we've seen it over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, while some cars still continue gaining in value, many have depreciated. Um, and automobile should not be perceived as such. Uh, an automobile is a bit like a rolling art. And, and as such should be a, you know, appreciated for what it is and not for its value. Uh, the value is only a reflection uh, to society of what it is. The cars are meant to be driven. Okay? Nobody should be afraid of it. Uh, these old cars are very easy to fix. Uh, all the parts and components are easy to find, to source. And they're so much easier to fix than a modern automobile. So they're meant to be driven. They like to be driven. They deteriorate when they don't drive. Uh, and then on top of that, I think it's our duty as car collectors uh, to look at ourselves as caretakers. And as caretakers, we are meant and we should show our cars to the public to keep the heritage going. And what would you say to somebody locally who maybe is thinking about getting into classic car ownership or thinking about buying one, but maybe a little bit worried about the commitment that goes into that? If it's a wealthy person, don't buy. Wait, learn, study, ask the rush questions, and don't worry, you will miss an opportunity today that will come back in a year's time. So don't buy, um, don't buy impulsively. Buy with, uh, with passion, buy with love, buy, buy because you know you want to buy it.